Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. I'm so glad to be back with you today. I am here with five fall DIYs. These are brand new fall DIYs for 2022 using items that are super easy to find. So let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we are going to take these plastic baseballs from Dollar Tree and wrap them with the beautiful fall colored fuzzy yarn. And then we're gonna add these little sweater mini pumpkins that I found at Dollar Tree as well. Now this is um, my version of a dough bowl because I don't have one. I found this unfinished at Hobby Lobby. It was actually on clearance, not sure why. And I'm just gonna take my Waverly Antique Wax and do the entire surface of this box inside and outside brushing on the antique wax a little bit at a time and then wiping off the excess if you've watched my channel for very long at all you know i love this dark stained wood look but again you don't have to use this exact container this is just what i had so if you already have something kind of similar to this use what you have on hand then I'm going to take, I bought two packs of three of these plastic baseballs from Dollar Tree and I just, I don't do much with yarn but I could not resist this fuzzy yarn in like this burgundy, tan, orange, and mustard. So I was originally going to wrap um, or do Mod Podge fabric strips on these baseballs but I did not have the fabric I thought I did. So I decided to attach the beginning of the yarn with some Mod Podge, and then I'm just going to very tightly wrap it around the ball, securing it as I needed to. There are little grooves in the baseball, so that kind of helped hold the yarn in certain places. But if it starts to slip, just kind of unwind it and go back. I just would do like a section and then kind of turn it a little bit and just keep going. This is the like tan, beigey color of the four that I found. There might have been a green, so there might be a fifth color if you want um, some variety based on your fall colors, but I really love these jewel-toned fall colors. Then once I had my ball covered sufficiently, I just trimmed the yarn and then secured it down with a little bit of Mod Podge and it held just fine. Now, um, it is a tiny bit crusty where you have it finished, but just have that be further down in the bowl so you can't see it. All right, so there you can see my burgundy, my orange, my yellow, and my tan. I did do two orange and two burgundy. I maybe would go back and get a third set of the balls to fill this bowl a little bit more, but I love these mini sweater pumpkins that you can get three for $1.25 so cute and then i also added in some of the faux leather leaves that if you don't have them yet should soon be in your store today's second diy is a project using some items from magnolia design company we have this awesome pumpkin trio that stands up this autumn leaves all over pattern stencil and the fall words so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to take my painter's tape and i'm going to tape off a section on the left side of each pumpkin that I'm going to paint and this is where we will end up putting the words. I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss. It's a darker sage green and I'm just going to do two light coats on the left side there for each of my three pumpkins. And once that moss colored paint is 
done with your second coat, go ahead and peel off your painter's tape and then we're gonna let those dry completely because now we're going to get ready to stencil our words. I'm using Harvest, Autumn, and Leaves. There's lots of different choices on this one large stencil, all different kinds of words for fall. So we're writing the name of our stencil on the back, then I'm gonna fuzz it a little bit on a tacky cloth or a shirt just to get a little bit of lint on the back so it doesn't pull up my chalk paint. And we're going to secure those words down. And I believe I'm using um, Almond Latte for the color here for my words. Just really easy to um, just put a little bit of that chalk paste on and run your squeegee across and then you get the great stenciled words. Now, you can use other surfaces. I'm just showing you what I'm making for my home using some of my Magnolia Design Company products. If you are interested in purchasing these products or any others, that link is in the description. Now, once my chalk pasted words were completely dry, I'm putting um, painter's tape there now on the other side of the line we made with the green. And I'm not really pressing the painter's tape down on the word, just kind of on that edge. You're going to see me here use maize on all three of my pumpkins. I used it kind of as a primer coat on the left and middle pumpkins um, because this white, I don't know what type of material it is, but it has a little bit of a gloss to it. So I did go ahead and do the light colored yellow on all three then I'll do a second coat of yellow on the smallest pumpkin on the right. And then you'll see we're gonna do two different colors on the middle pumpkin and the one on the left. For my middle pumpkin, I'm going to use the lighter sage green that's called celery. And then for our tallest pumpkin, I'm gonna paint over that yellow with pumpkin, the really pretty orange color from Waverly Chalk Paint. So for this project, I showed you how to use the fall word stencils, and now I'm gonna show you how I can use this all over pattern stencil called Autumn Leaves. And I'm going to use it one time and be able to get it on all three of my pumpkins at once. That way I don't have to use it, then go clean it off, let it dry. So you can see there's a, um, a space all the way around the stencil that it doesn't go all the way to the edge. So I'm lining up that line on the line between the moss green and whatever other color I painted the pumpkin. I think you can see it a little bit at the on the orange pumpkin, but you'll be able to see what I mean a little bit more here. See how I moved that edging right onto that space between, or that line between the moss green and now here the maize yellow. That way I don't have to worry about my um, pattern going onto the moss green where the word is. You could also put painter's tape back down um, to keep the pattern just on the yellow or the maize, the celery, or the pumpkin orange part of the pumpkin. I hope that made sense. I think it does if you look at how I have everything laid out. Now I am taking my four colors of chalk paste and using my little stirrer, I'm just blobbing on some because I'm going to make this kind of a, um, a mixture of colors. So there I use chocolate brown. Now I'm using uh, orange tiger. I'm not gonna use the orange tiger on my orange pumpkin just because it's pretty much the same color. This one is called mustard seed and then we'll finish up with our magnolia green. And then what I'm gonna do is just take my squeegee and cover 
the mesh space of the stencil, but I'm going to kind of go, I don't, not over and over this space because I don't want it to all be brown, but you're gonna go over it enough to fill in the stencil in the least number of passes as possible. So you'll see what I mean here. We're gonna kind of just go over our stencil, blending our colors together, and I was so happy with how this turned out. So it really does look just like a big blobby mess of paint colors until you slowly peel away your stencil and reveal the gorgeous stenciled leaves that have all those different fall colors in them. I really love how this turned out and I was glad I could cover all three pumpkins just placing the stencil down one time. I think my favorite one is the yellow pumpkin. Those colors just seem to really pop out. Now I did spray my pumpkins with my clear matte spray from Rust-Oleum so that um, if these happen to get wet, the beautiful stenciled images would not come off. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad you found me. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And if you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for continuing to come back each and every week for my DIY videos. I hope everyone will check their notifications by hitting the bell and make sure they're set to all so YouTube will let you know each time I upload a new content or go live on my channel. For DIY number three, we're going to take three of these rectangular framed signs from Dollar Tree, some of the new faux leather words, and some scrapbook paper that's available from Hobby Lobby year round. So I've had these for a little while, but I think I'm still finding them in some of my stores or at least something similar where it has a space in the center and then the raised frame. So what I did once I opened them all is I'm removing the backing, whatever it is on it from the frame because I'm going to paint the frames first. And I'm also gonna use some pliers to remove that little hanger. If you wanted to keep the hanger on your top one, that might be helpful too to help hang this project if you were wanting to hang it. I love this dark teal color from Waverly. It's called Peacock. And I did notice that these frames had a little bit of a shiny finish to them. So I did actually go over the frame two times with um, the Peacock. So I did a total of two coats on each of the frames. But you can see I'm gonna do the front. I'm gonna do the outside edges and also the inside edges with this color. Now, if this color does not fit into your fall decor, feel free to either leave the frames the color they are or paint them with a different shade of paint. Next, whatever is on the actual sign part of whatever sign you're using, you're gonna want to remove that. This had like some cardboard or chipboard words. Some of these were glued on pretty good, so I peeled those off and then peel off the paper. This sign in particular had like a plastic coating over it. So you can do as little destruction of the sign or as much as you want. I just wanted the surface to be white and not have any bumps. So 
or you could always just flip it around and um, use the back side. But I'm getting all three of these signs to be as clean as possible because then I'm going to measure it and I believe it ended up being about three and a quarter inches by 10 inches is the size of my rectangles for the signs I was using. I'm using two different fall scrapbook papers from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna do two of them with the leaves and one with that super cute crisscross plaid, I guess you'd call it, um, with that teal color and also the orange. Once I had my three pieces of scrapbook paper cut, I'm just using my matte Mod Podge to put a light layer on the sign where we had taken everything off that was decorating it. And then I am going to use my Magnolia Water Mister and just spray a little bit on the back of the scrapbook paper. I always get questions why I do this. I've just found that this is the best way to get the paper to adhere all the way down without any air bubbles or wrinkles. So smooth it out. We're gonna do that to all three of our rectangles to get our signs ready to go back in the frames. Now that our frames are dry, as well as our Mod Podged signs, we're gonna just pop those back into the frame. And then using some scissors or pliers, we'll put those um, little, I don't know, brads or whatever they are on the back, clamp that sign back down so it's nice and firm inside each of the three frames. And here's what our three signs look like. I'm using some of these new faux leather words I found at Dollar Tree. There's a darker brown and then a light tan. The darker brown has the words grateful and blessed, two of each. And the light brown had blessed and thankful, two of each. Of course, if you can't find these, you can add words to your signs. So many different ways, um, galvanized metal words, using wood letters, using stickers, just really you're only limited by your imagination. But I was excited to find these faux leather words. Let me know in the comments if you're able to find them at your Dollar Tree. Then once I have my words in place, I'm gonna just run a squiggle of hot glue on the top of the second sign and hot glue that to the top one. We'll do the same thing to attach the bottom sign to the middle one. And then I will say that once that was dry, I did run some hot glue on the back on the seams where the signs met each other. You could use craft sticks too if you wanted to make it super secure. Now I'm at the end of the roll of this yellow burlap ribbon from Walmart, so it's curling up on me like crazy. But I decided I wanted to add a little more texture and interest to this project by making two little yellow burlap flowers. So if you haven't seen how you do this, you cut a length there of the ribbon. I believe it's six inch burlap ribbon. And I took a couple of the, um, strands that were going up and down and then you're just going to start pulling out those long center strips so you can see now i only have a couple of the long pieces left on either side then using my cool shot glue gun 
I'm gonna glue those two ends together. And when you fold this in half and glue those together, that's what makes the little loops that will become the petals of your flower. I think seeing me do it rather than me explaining it will make it make more sense. But then you're gonna keep gluing all the way down there until your piece is folded in half. Then run glue along that edge again, and we're just gonna roll up the piece of burlap that's already folded in half and this is going to give us the round shape of our flower. The last step then is to just kind of fluff out the petals of your pulled string flower shape it how you want and then I usually like to put something in the center to help flatten it out a little bit so I'm going to use a couple of wood buttons that are just in a variety pack I got from Walmart this one's a little small I do wish I had a few larger buttons that might have to be on my shopping list next time I go to Walmart so I'm going to add these two yellow pulled string burlap flowers to my sign. I just really loved how it turned out. And again, just put a little bit of hot glue and glue those down. And this is what our finished sign looks like. For a complete list of all the supplies I've used in today's projects and some important links, please check the description box below the title of this video. DIY number four is a two-sided calendar cutting board. I was excited to find one of these new 2023 farmhouse calendars in my local store and this cutting board is from Target's Dollar Spot. Now the color is really just fine the way it is. It's not really unfinished, but I like my wood a little bit darker. So I am again taking my Waverly chalk paint in antique wax and darkening up the color of my cutting board, brushing on the antique wax, wiping off the excess, and then letting it dry. I am going to use this antique wax on both sides of my cutting board, as well as the edging all the way around. So this is the November image from this particular calendar. If you cannot find the calendars, you can always Google free fall printable images or something like that. Uh, there's always so many and then just print out the one that you want. But with this Dollar Tree calendar, you saw I kind of placed it on top of the cutting board and I'm kind of marking out where I'm going to fold it because then in a second, you're going to see that on those folds, I'm going to spritz a little bit of water for a totally different reason this time. This is just working with the paper and I'm going to rip the edges. This is going to give this project more of a farmhouse look rather than having crisp straight edges if we were to cut out the image. So after folding the calendar page, I did spritz a little water on it because then what I'm doing is I'm kind of ripping the edges to give it more of a jagged look. Next, I placed it on top of my cutting board just to kind of center it and see if I needed to take any more pieces off. This is the December image that I'm going to do on the other side of my cutting board. So now I'm just gonna go through that very same process, but with this image kind of folding or marking where I'm gonna fold it and where we're going to rip it to get it to fit nicely on the cutting board.
Now that I have my images ready to go, I'm gonna use my matte finish Mod Podge. I'm gonna put a pretty generous layer over the entire front side of this cutting board. That will help have the finish look uniform, not just around where the calendar page is going to go down. So smooth that out as evenly as you can. Then I did spritz some water on the back of the calendar page, and then we'll get that centered and pressed down nicely to get out any air bubbles. And I just love this project. It turned out so great and it's so simple. And just remember, if you can't find this calendar, you might have other calendars that'll work or print images from online. Once the fall side was done and completely dried, now I am flipped it over and I'm going to do the December side the exact same way. I also did put a layer of Mod Podge over the top of the calendar page and again over the rest of the cutting board to make sure our paper stayed down and wasn't going to peel off. Then on the fall side, once everything was dry, I decided just to add a few little fall leaves. These are from a pick I've had for a while, um, quite possibly from Dollar Tree, but I'm put, just putting a little dot of hot glue there at the base and gluing those to that top section there. Then I am gonna add a small little bow that I used uh, jute twine. I wrapped it around my fingers a few times, trimmed it, and then uh, wired it with some floral wire in the center. Glue that below your leaves, and then I'm gonna add a green leaf or green button to the center of this bow. Now here's what our fall side looks like. I wanted to make whatever I added um, so that it wasn't sticking out too much um, to the other side because then you can flip this around and use it for Christmas season as well. I probably will add a black and white buffalo check ribbon bow to that same spot but on this Christmas side. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and they'll show it to more and more viewers. Our last project for today are these cute fall rakes. Using two of these toy plastic rakes from Dollar Tree, some leaves or fall florals, and these two wood words that were from fall last year, I believe, they have them again this year. If they do not, in the Hobby Lobby party section that is seasonally for fall parties, they normally have some wood words that are designed like to set on your plates as place settings, but they are great for this type of project as well. So I used celery, I believe it was. I'll put it in the description. Chalk paint to paint those words. And then now taking some black and white Ribbon from Dollar Tree, I'm just folding back and forth to make a bow that I'm going to secure with floral wire. And it is a wired ribbon. This is a spool I got from Dollar Tree. So I have two loops on each side and then two tails. I am going to fold those tails in half to dovetail them. And then make sure you have enough um, floral wire at the end of the bow, at the back of the bow, so you can wrap it and secure it to the rake. Let me also say that you want to make sure you use spray paint that is bonding well to plastic. I did not, and so there's just a couple places on one of my rakes where you can see the red coming through, but if you use one that's for plastic, you should be good. So I wrapped the bow around the long piece of the rake and then I'm also going to secure it with hot glue. I will also, once this dries, flip it over and re and I uh, use hot glue to secure it on the front side as well. Next, taking a little bit of hot glue, I'm gonna secure it down my words to the, I call it the shovel part of the rake, 
just tacking that down right there at the top of that, securing your bow even more. And then I'm gonna just add some florals to the handle of the rake. I decided that instead of using individual floral stems, I took this little pick from Dollar Tree. It's got some mums and like a pumpkin or an acorn, and I'm kind of splitting the pieces of it in half so that I can wrap them around the left and the right sides here of my handle. And then on the back, I'm just hot gluing the stem down. Now, looking back, probably I should have or could have um, covered up that piece of stem with just another skinny piece of the uh, ribbon just to cover it up. But in reality, this is going to be hanging on a wall or in a corner, so you're really not going to see the back side of it. Here I'm just adding a few little individual flowers back in. I was wanting a little bit more of that orangish red color. And I did make two different rakes, so we're going to do the same thing to this second rake using this other little floral pick that I had from Dollar Tree last year. Again, use whatever florals or leaves you have on hand. And here are my finished rakes. I love how they turned out. I think I'm gonna make a couple more and sell these in my fall craft show that is towards the end of September. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please, as always, let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.